Well, I put the painting I was just working on back on the shelf and it's going to sit and wait for a while before it gets completed. I'm really happy with the uh, progress that I made on it, but uh, I thought I just picked up a few canvases today and I thought I'd like to do something fresh. So my thoughts for this one are, well, <laughs> Sort of the edge of a field, the edge of a pasture maybe. Um, you see that in the Caribou region of BC quite a bit. I grew up with seeing a, a lot of it in Manitoba. You're just walking along an open field and you'll be looking off into the bush and you can see all kinds of interesting shapes in there. And, uh, and in the fall especially, you can have some beautiful colors. So I'm just going to try to piece together a small composition here and uh, keep it loose colorful, quite impressionistic, yeah, really just going to shoot for something decorative. So, it's a theme I, I like, you know, it's a theme I like visiting, there's no question about that. Disappeared under the canopy, and we'll have a bit of canopy showing in behind there. Because we're looking up underneath a little bit. Because we're on the ground, and this is a little higher than we are. Very rough with the charcoal so far, as you can see. And my magic eraser, I don't need that there right now. This to be a telephone pole. All right. Um, somewhat of a bush. Closing things in there a little bit. trunk about here. Maybe a pair of them actually. Branch coming off there. Bit of a trunk showing there and here and just on the edge maybe. Yes, it's a big, it's, it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle to start with, but that's okay. And like some, some bush in here as well. Okay, I'd like to look into the bush a little more than that. So we'll come down with that one a bit. Bush goes behind it, and then here we go. And and something coming down about here, maybe. Location of branches to be determined later. <laughs> Toy does not come with batteries. Then we flatten out a little bit here because we're on the edge of the pasture. Looking at. That's it. Lightly brush off your excess, your, my, my excess charcoal here. And draw in. Yes, I pre-mixed that. <laughs> draw in our 
the largest tree here. Again, you know, looking at my shapes and saying, okay, how can I, how can I improve on what I was doing? I'm not going to be very fussy with this washing, as you can see, because it's a relatively small painting that's going to be done with a knife. What is this? I think this is 16 by 16. So we'll make that dark right away. Oh. Okay. No, it's my color is a little too dark for everywhere else. I'm gonna add what I have right now is uh, actually ultramarine blue and uh, raw umber. And that's what I've been uh, outlining this tree with. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to that mixture, make it a, a deep green. Still very low value, but yeah, we're just doing a washing. So again, that's it's just fine. We're getting rid of the white. This is a wraparound uh, canvas, so I'm kind of making sure that I get over the shoulders of the canvas with a little bit of paint. Saving myself a little bit of grief later on, that's all. Alright. So there is an old rule of the thumb out there that says Unless your painting has got all kinds of vertical trunks running through it, as is this this is the case, you know I have a number of vertical trunks, but they're not lengthwise going right through the painting, uh, and and they will be broken up with quite a bit of brush. You don't really want to go more than two thirds of the height of the painting in this case, without breaking it with something. Um, yeah, it just it's it's a little less comfortable on the eyes. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to go by that rule. I know that works for me. So we're going to have that. That's a branch sitting on the back side. Um, that bit of trunk is going to come into this, coming up the front of the tree, our side of the tree. I'm going to put another bit of foliage right here, incurring on that trunk as well. There, I think that makes it a little more interesting. Now, some bush here. Some bush coming in the foreground. Now I've gone into my greens that I have up here. 
I won't be using this dark a color anymore in the wash-in stage. It's close. As far as the camera's concerned, it probably all looks the same. And it probably wouldn't matter too much if I did go with the same stuff. meets the bush so to speak all right now I'm going to give my brush a wipe and I'm going to use a lizard and crimson and um, Ultramarine blue. Wash this trunk in with a deep purple. Again, that's not a coloring book. I'm not trying to be too fussy about it. But this trunk will probably be a fairly rich brown. And I thought that it would be a good, a good base to have a couple behind it. And now we're going to add to that mixture a bit of yellow ochre, a bit of burnt sienna, Leaving, leaving a little bit of uh, of the ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson in there. I want the glow to come from behind. The majority of the glow to come from behind these bushes, although light will be catching these a little bit. So I'm still washing these bushes in fairly dark. It's going to be coming from the left. I'm just going to add a touch of white to that mixture. A little more lizard and crimson. I'm using a little lighter and dirtier purple than I used on the tree trunk because I think it's more than likely that these bushes in the foreground are going to end up being, uh, well, yeah, mauve, hints of green maybe. Okay. Now, just to keep things dark, what am I doing? Oh, I need to add a little more raw umber to my mix here. quite as dark as the main tree outline, but still fairly dark. I'm bringing that tree in a little closer to the big trunk. Just going to make it dark for now. Um, I don't think I quite like where that one is. Uh, okay, you know what? We'll do that. We'll, we will go right from top to bottom there. Here, 
That's dead center. I don't want a dead center. I may have a branch coming up there from there. So, oh, what do we do here? What do we do? I think what I'll do is come down about here with something. All right, and. I want it to go lower here than this, than the top of this. We want things staggered. You want to avoid having things line up on you too much. Uh, maybe that will show up. Maybe that will show up right above there as well. This one too, because now, now I think I have the nerve to pop that in there. All right, and show up here again. And Stay away from those super straight trunks. Trunks have knots, trunks have limbs, trunks have mushrooms, trunks have bumps. Okay, that's the underside of more dish, distant uh, a canopy of leaves that are over top. And from under that canopy of leaves, this trunk is showing for a bit here as well. Yeah, that can go right to there. Okay, I was having it on the edge. I'm not going to have it on the edge anymore. We're going to have that one move in. That branch go right off the painting. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll come down with that a little bit more too. Yeah. Okay, we'll see about that. Um, Okay, any other trunks that are going to be in the painting are going to be indicated when I paint colors in with the knife. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with too many dark trunks. So, let's get back to this canopy up here. I'm going to go with the... Uh, sort of a warm yellow ochre. A lizard and crimson, and uh, and what? A bit of ultramarine blue in there, and there's some residue of there's some residue of uh, burnt umber or, or uh, raw umber as well. Showing through. Okay, there's a bit of a foliage covering that trunk there. And a little bit. cover as well behind this bush yeah. I think 
think I can even dare to do that. There, just some dabs of it here and there to break things up. Here too. residual ultramarine blue in there. Slowly working our way a little warmer, a little lighter. I, again, I hope it shows up on camera, but it may not. You're definitely going to see what happens when the knife goes into this, though. Today's word is messy. That's okay, it's what you want when you're playing with a knife. And even when you're setting things up for a knife, unless you're doing buildings or, or very specific uh, rock strata. But as I said before, I think I, I want to keep this fairly loose and colorful. And if you start tight, there's no way you loosen up. The, the human tendency is always to tighten up as you work, as you work your way through the painting. Oh, I'm just burning through that yellow ochre. I'm going to have to put a little more of that on the palette as well. That should be enough. Now I'm leaving the red out of it for the moment. You know, if I go over a branch or something, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. it uh, it's funny how... It's funny how the brush strokes all by themselves can actually hint at uh, changes as you, as you move along. evolving. That's what keeps it fun. You imagine how boring it would be if you laid out a plane or laid out a plan and you just had to stick to it and anything other than sticking to your plan was a failure. I wouldn't do this. There's no way I would do this. It'd be no fun at all as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I'm gonna go Sienna and see what happens. Okay. Okay, pretty fuzzy, eh? Makes you want to squint your eyes a little bit. Try to, try to refocus. Just throw a few more vertical lines in there in case they come in handy later. <clears throat> and our foreground now, and I want that foreground to be boring. So we're back to our raw umber hint of uh, 
of uh, ultramarine blue in there. Going to keep it kind of dark. The, the light will catch it in, in places, but not much, I'm thinking, so far. We'll see. We'll, we'll play it by ear. You know, I know it's just a wash-in, but even the washing is fun because considering how quickly it can be done, it's a pretty good risk-reward ratio for, for what you're actually doing. And you can correct it. Ah, you screw up a little bit, so what? It doesn't matter. Okay. The white is gone. Let me just zoom out here a minute. No, actually, I'll pick up the tripod and give you a squarer view. More parallel to the front of the canvas so you can see things a little more clearly. There we go. Okay, we have a basic composition there. I can definitely work with that. Next, we hop in there with a the knife. I think the knife. <laughs> we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.